supposed to have a learning. Should be a panacea. And if we're shlema, everybody needs. We did, um, today we'll start a lot of dialogue. We did a uh, lot of gimel, we did the end. We, the last thing that you remember we learned was um, regarding Kayanim, who was counted or who went through the Yamsef. Remember that's the last piece. Today we start a lot of dialogue. <clears throat> it's on gimel on the base, so it's about it. Masnisa, the Mishnah says, even though we said that you don't take a collateral for the payment of the half a shekel, it's done once a year at the beginning of Adar, you don't take a collateral from women, um, slaves, or children. But if they gave, you do accept it. Why would I think not? They give a shekel. If they give a shekel, not the mask. Yeah. If they give a shekel, you you accept it. Why? What's what would the the issue be? The question is, are they giving it a hundred percent that it should become part of the community, part of the community sacrifice? We don't want it to for them to still be holding on to it as if it's an individual donation. We want it. We want it to become absorbed in the community fund. Well, let's say they didn't give it 100% to the community. I'm giving my own thing. Everyone gave, yeah, but my thing is uh, still uh, separated, still my individual, my participation. In. So then, why would a woman that? Because a man gives as an obligation, so they're not giving it as a private donation. So it becomes, oh, Yaakov, beautiful. I would have worn my other kapata. <laughs> okay. Very nice. If you want, there's a gemara down here. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, here they have they, they actually it's shkala. It's the large. Okay, they have to give it over a hundred percent. Hanachri vaakuti shashaklo ananju. Or a Kuti. Kuti are the Samaritans. Those are the people that, after the Jewish people were exiled, right from the north, Shalmaneser. So they um, uh, they they brought they brought over people to live in the north from uh, Kuta, or whatever. and so they converted because those people, they moved into the land of Israel, they converted because the, the lions were coming and eating the people if they don't follow the Torah, so they converted. So the Gemara calls them lion converts, right? Gere Ari, Arias, right? So um, there's a whole question if they're considered Jewish or not, and it was a big discussion, and we're gonna talk about it a little bit today. But if they gave a shekel, a non-Jew or a Kuti gave a shekel, in makablam them, you don't accept it from them. The in makablam miyadam, and you also don't accept from them. You can see it's not so clear when there's a use of a pronoun here. It doesn't tell me who. From them, you don't receive from them. Who's a them? <laughs> Let's spell it out. So, kine um, zavim. The birds that come along if someone was contaminated because of a zav. Yeah, we want to go on. Okay, so open up to Gimel Amid Beis. It's towards the back of it because it's the shkala. Kine zavim is uh, someone that, uh, a man that's coming because of the submission, a mission that he has, so he needs to bring these birds. Kine zavais, that's a woman. Kine yaldais. The woman gives birth, she also has to bring these birds. You don't accept these from the non-Jew or the Kuti. That's simply what the Pshad is here. Or a sin offering or a guilt offering. You don't accept from a non-Jew or a Kuti. Those two types of sacrifices. Zaklal, here's the rule. We're learning a Mishnah. Kol neither than neither. Anything that could be given as a donation. So such a thing, we accept that from a non-Jew. Anything that is not 
given as a donation? Why? Why is it not given as a, it's an obligation? Why, why would it be an obligation? Well, the person was tummy, the person had a child, the person committed a sin, and they want to do that. So then, in Makablam Yadam, you don't receive it from them. Yeah. This is uh, clear in the text from Ezra. What happened was when they came back in the second base of Middash, so the Kutim said, oh, we're going to help you. The Kutim were troublemakers then. It was the beginning of the second base of Middash. They said, we're going to, first they stopped the building. Um, they they convinced the, uh, the king that they should stop it. And then they said, oh, we're going to help. And it turns out that they were really trying to, uh, <laughs> to sabotage the, the construction. And at, the, at a certain point they had to have, it says that they were building Half the people were building, half the people were standing guard to make sure the people didn't attack. So it says, that when at a certain point they said, we're gonna, we're gonna help you. The Kutim said, we're gonna help you build. So Ezra said, It's not for you and us to build the house for God. It's just for us alone, which means we don't accept the shekel from Akuti. That's what the, the shekel was the, uh, went for the funds of the base of Mikdash, specifically sacrifices, but we didn't accept from them. Okay, now in some Gemaras, yeah, yeah, well, we have other things that we accepted, yeah, that's a good question. Let's see, let's see later in the Gemara today, we'll see how to reconcile that. Okay, um, there's a bit of a complication because there's arguments about this, but in the next part of the Mishnah, when you gave your half a shekel, there was a small ex- uh, fee for the exchange of the, uh, of the currency of the, of the coin that had to come along with it. It was called a kalbine. I saw the Taklan Kharitin translates the word kalbine as kalbain. Bain means an exchange, like between this and that. And Kal means a small, an exchange rate, an exchange uh, um, premium, exchange fee. Exchange fee. So this, we're going to see that there's a machlekes. First of all, how much the exchange fee is, but that's not the big deal. Um, there's a machlekes, why, what this fee is really doing. Some say, well, it's because you had a larger coin or you had a smaller coin, you have to join it together to get the half a shekel exact. So that's the exchange fee. The other one says that the coin could have been clipped or run or, or uh, rubbed out. And it's not exactly a half a shekel. So you have to add a little bit just in case. What's enough community between those two opinions? Enough community is uh, very nice. Enough community is the practical difference would be that if you, if you have... Uh, <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Special editions for the wine. Can we just rock? Dr. Yomi? Dr. Yomi? Four cups? Oh, wow. Wow, this is so cool. See, they put four cups on it. On the wine. Yeah. When I was a kid, they, my uh, my mother told me to set the say the table. So um, I said I started saying I said we don't have enough cups. Said, what do you mean we have enough cups? I, said, I, w- I was putting four cups by each person. I said no, you have to. You we use one cup, you just refill it. I said that's four cups. I mean that I do all the time. I refill the cup, but I thought for sure you have to have. Okay, you put four cups. <laughs> okay, so we're discussing the Calbine. The Kalbain, uh, which is this exchange um, fee, the practical difference would be if I have already a half a shekel, if I'm concerned about that, maybe the coin was clipped or the coin isn't uh, isn't the full half a shekel, then I have to add the Kalbain. But if it's only for the exchange, so then if I bring a, a, a full shekel, we're going to call that a seller. And I need to, to divide it and I need to exchange that to get the right amount. So then I have to pay, but otherwise I don't have to. Okay, let's see. 
the following people that give are on top of four A. The following people that give the half a shekel have to pay the kalbay. Levium. We said the levy has to give. We said the kayan was a whole discussion, but a levy, yes. Yisraelim, Gerim, the convert, has to pay. Avadim, Avadim Shachrarim, rather, slaves that are slaves that have been freed. They're just like converts. They have to pay. Avalai Kayanim Venashim Avadim Maktanim, but not Kayanim, women, slaves, and Ktanim and minors. Yesterday, we avoided a lot of issues by translating minors as under 20. It, it helps a lot of issues, but it's not necessarily um, everyone's opinion, but it does resolve. It makes it easier to learn this command. We'll see. Ashrekel al Kayan, someone that pays the half a shekel on behalf of a Kayan. Now, the Kayan is exempt. Al Isha, on behalf of the woman, Al Yedei Ebed, Al Yedei Katan is Pater. Why? Because they themselves are Pater from the Kalbain. So they themselves are Pater from the half a shekel. So if you pay the half a shekel for them, you don't have to pay the exchange fee as well. Their whole thing is just extra. Very interesting. Very interesting. I don't know how to answer that. Yes, he's asking if the exchange fee is a is a fee for the exchange, which is like a bank fee. So then what's the difference if it's a mitzvah or not? No, it's not Yeah, that's the answer. The answer the, the, answer, the answer is is that the shekel is much the half a shekel is much more than the kalbin. So if I have to pay a half a shekel, then we, we charge you the kalbin as well for the exchange fee. But if you don't have to pay a half a shekel and you're just giving a half a shekel, so even if we exchange it for you, but so what? You're getting so much more. The basic English is getting so much more that you don't have to pay that. Okay. The im shekel al if a person paid a half a shekel for himself and for his friend, so he's paying for two, right? He gives a full shekel. We're going to call that a seller in, in this command. He gives a full shekel. And he says, it's for me and my friend. So chayev bekal He has to give one kalban. The exchange fee. What happens with the exchange? exchange? You give a, a dollar, you want two uh, 50 cent. Um, pieces. So that's one uh, transaction. Okay, good. So you only pay once. One Kalbin. The mayor and base Kalbinus. The mayor says, no, you have to pay two. <laughs> Each one has to pay. We'll see exactly. But the, the simple explanation is that according to Reb Mayer, the Kalbin was not the exchange fee. The Kalbin was in case the coin wasn't, wasn't complete. So each one has to give a full half a shekel. Maybe the coin was clipped. We have to give a little bit more just to cover that. We're going to see in the Gemara that this is possibly a continuation of Reb Meir's view. Possibly not. You see, we just said Reb Meir. Reb Meir and Beis Kalbanus. Okay, now it goes on. It says, Someone gives a full, a full shekel. The, Gemara, the Mishnah calls it a cell. And he needs to get half. So he gives his, he gives a full, he says, give me change. So Vinaitel Shekel, Chayv Shnekel Bainas. There were two transactions there. One was his half a shekel that he gave, and one was the change that he got back. <laughs> Every time it's like that's a problem. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Al Yad Ani. Someone pays on behalf of a poor person. Aliyad Shrenai for his neighbor, Aliyad Benirai for someone in the city, his pater. He's exempt from the Kalban. We'll see why. He's exempt from the Kalban. Um, Hilvan is Chayev. If he lent it to them, in other words, they have to pay him back, so then he didn't really do it on their behalf. 
as a gift. He's lending it to them and they have to pay him back. So then that's a regular giving of the half a shekel. Just, he, they just laid out the money. So this chayv and a kalbin. Pa'achin hashutfim, shachayavim bekalbin, peturim mi meister behema. This is in, with an inheritance. There's two stages of the inheritance. Let's say they don't divide the inheritance. They keep it as like a um, trust. Um, so the two brothers that have this inheritance, it could be that it's determined already how much each one, each one has, and they become partners in this trust, in this um, in this. Uh, State. Yeah, the lawsuit's been settled. <laughs> and they each have a certain amount of um, percentage of what it is, 50, 50, it's already been determined. So then they become part. Or it could be it's still in trust. It's still the father's estate. It hasn't really been divided. So if it's already been divided, then they become regular partners. Now they still own both of them. Both. Um, yeah, we had it with the words, had to divide it up. Very good. Yaakov is here. So, um, so how would this work? If they're actual partners, the rule is with partners, Partners don't have to give Meister Behema. It's only if it's your own animals, you have to give a tenth of your, your own animals, but not partners. Partners don't have to pay a tenth. Uh, it becomes a sacrifice. They don't have to do that. So if it's in, still in the father's estate, so then they have to give Meister Behema because the father is the real owner. There is, they're not the partners in it. The father passed away, but it's still in that trust. So if they're Chayev in a Kalbain, that means that it's already been divided. They just own half. They each own half. So then they're paternal in Meister Behema. Then they're partners and they don't have to give Meister Behema. Chayev and Meister Behema. But it's a, if the Chayev and Meister Behema, because it wasn't really divided, it's still in the trust of the, uh, it's just, it's still in the father's estate. It's not the individual, right? It's not two individuals yet. So then paternal in a Kalba, and then they're exempt from the Kalba. And just like someone that pays on behalf of someone else was exempt from a Kalban, which means over here the father is paying for them. But Kamu Kalban, now the Gemara says, how much is this exchange fee that you're talking about? Ma Kesa. It's a Ma. The Ma is. Um, 1 uh, 30, 32nd. How do you say that? One, uh, 132, <laughs> one out of 32 from a um, from a full seller, from a full shekel, which means from a, oh no, I'm sorry, it's 124, 124th, 124th of a full seller, which would mean 112th of, uh, yeah, because they increased it. Really, Esrim Geira HaShekel, is that a positive? Esrim Geira HaShekel? Um, there were 20 geira, geira is a ma, 20 geira in a, in a shekel, but then they added to it, and it turns out that it's one, it's 24 ma, or geira, that's another word for the same kind, in a shekel, which means a half a shekel is is 12 geira, the 12th ma. So, ma kesef divra, me'evacham and chatzima, some say that it's chatzima, which goes back to 24. Yeah, now, a dinar, two dinarim, are a shekel, and there are six ma in a dinar, okay, so, which means 12 and a half a shekel, and 24 and a full shekel, right? Okay. This currency was probably Roman. Oh, um, where did it discuss? Yeah. Some gate of shekel? yeah. We were using new currency. Right. Normal currency. Normal currency. I don't know. <laughs> That's funny. 
Yeah, there's a whole discussion because according to certain, certain reasons, we, they, I think they claim the Hittites brought in the currency. Um, that's what the historians say. Where do we get exactly? It must have been from the Hittites. Uh, that's what the historians claim. Yeah, the question is that, yeah, how, what was the size of it that they were using? It, it was definitely precious. Precious. The mall officially was silver. The shekel was silver. Right. 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 Okay, let's start the Gemara. We, the Mishnah started off with saying that we don't take a mashkin from women, slaves, and children. However, if they give, we accept it. Halatvaya. But what about claiming it from them? We said if they come out of their own free will and give it, we accept it. But do we claim it from them also? It says, you don't, you don't claim it. Just if they give it. If they give it, then good. We said that you don't take a collateral. You know, there's a middle point over here that, that's missed out. We said, you don't take a collateral. But if they give on their own, then fine. But what about claiming it? That middle stage, the, the, the Mishnah leaves out. Halitvaya in Taivan. Hacha at is Amar Taivan. Vahacha is Amar in Taivan. Yeah, this is your Shalmi. It's, it's not about it, so the language is a little different. So is Amar is the, is the, probably is Itmar. So here it was stated. Um, Taivin, that you claim it. And here it's stated that you don't claim it. Where was it stated that you claim it? In the last Mishnah, we said, um, you don't take the collateral, and we learned from that, but claiming it, you do claim it from them. Okay. So the Gemari answers, Now, I said it's easier to learn it if it's, we're talking about the children we're holding by 20. What we'd say over here is like this. Um, if they have two pubic hairs, they reach mat maturity. So then you claim it from them. But if they didn't reach maturity, even though they're over 13, if they're under 20, so then you don't claim it from them. But if they give it, you still accept it. Okay. Hanachri. I don't know how to, I don't know how to learn this if it's 13. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know the chat. Because the Lord says in Nida that if they have um, maturity before they're 13, then um, it's not counted. It doesn't mean anything. So how what, what would be happening here? I don't know. Also, the, the Shkalim was really one of the things we said was that it was the way of counting the people that went to war. And they war, they only went to at age 20. Not the, in America, we go at 18, right? Can it, when can you enlist in um, 18? 17? Uh-huh, so 17. Uh, <laughs> trophy. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, it's age 20. Hanachri va Okay, now we have to discuss the Nanju and the Kuti. Amar Rabi Ba. Rabi Ba is Rabbi Abba. Rabbi Abba, that's the, the missing Aleph, the Yusham. Tipater, Tipater is the uh, Yerushalmi, is Hachamay Eskinan, or Hafi Kama. Explain it like this. Kamanda Markuti Kanachri. We have to say that this is following the view that a Kuti is like a non-Jew. The Samaritans were considered not Jewish. Um, at the end, everyone agreed that they were not considered Jewish, but there was a machlaikas for a long period of time where they considered Jewish. But this mission is going to have to follow the view that the Kutim were not considered Jew, were not considered Jews. They're considered non-Jews. Um, although it's biblically prohibited. <laughs> okay, um, the espalgan because there's a machlaikas kuti kenachri. 
a kuti is like a non-Jew. Divri Rebbe, that's the opinion of Rebbe. Reb Shimon Ben Gamliel Aymer, that's Rebbe's father, he held kuti ki Yisrael choldavar, a kuti is considered Jewish for, for all, for, um, for everything. Yeah. Um, the mumer's gonna, gonna uh, leave, leave, that, leave that out because it's gonna complicate things. And a drop. Amar Ablazer. That's Eliasa. Eliasa. Yeah, the Yushalmi drops. Uh, it, it, it's the, Yush, the dialect. It's like uh, I called it like in it like in it like uh, Ibonics. So the blazer, Rabbi Lazar says, Masnisin ben Nachrim. The Mishnah has to be talking about non-Jews. Haba kutim lai, but not with kutim. Vitani, and it was taught in a brisa. We'll see in a moment what we're talking about here. Betani Cain, it was taught in a brisa. Adam, when it says a man will bring a sacrifice, the rabbi says a gerim, it's coming to include converts. And included in that, according to what he wants to say, is that it would include kutim. Mikam, from you, lahitias and mumrin. Mumrin. But not a mumr. Yeah. That's why it confuses me. Ananju, yes, a mumr, no. A Jewish person that rejects the Torah, we don't accept the sacrifice from him. A non-Jew that wants to bring a sacrifice to God, we do accept it. So, Rabbi Lazar is saying like this. When the Mishnah says that a Nachi and a Kuti that give a Shekel, we don't accept it from them. Fine. That, as Ezra told us, don't accept anything from them in the construction of the temple. Don't accept the Shekel from them. What about when it comes to a sacrifice? It says, the Ein Mekabla Miyadam, and you don't accept from them other sacrifices, but you do accept um, Now, who's it talking about? A Nanju or a Kuti? Who's it talking about? When, it's, when it says, if we don't accept from them this, but we do accept from them that. Well, it's, Mrs. is talking about both. Nachem Vikutim. So comes along Rabbi Lazar, and he says, Masnisin, the Mishnah is only talking about Nachim, not Kutim. And who does he want to say the Mishnah is? Um, the Mishnah would fit with both opinions. Yeah, because we're not discussing Kutim. <laughs> yeah, there's a Machlaikis, what Kutim are. So ignore the Machlaikis. We're not discussing them anyway. If it would be the opinion of Rebbe, Kuti Kanachri, then that would really that should be fine. If it would be like Rebbe, then fine. Because they would be regular non Jewish people and you can accept from them. Oh, but then we would say Yisrael Umar, we won't accept from them. That's so it is correct what you're saying. Yeah, Moshe said, said that they would be considered a Umar. Um, if they're Jewish, but they're just not, not religious, then that would be worse. But not today is not religious, the, rejecting the religion. The Gemara says like this, Why does it have the Aleph? Huh? It goes back and forth, it doesn't, it's not consistent. The, it says that our Mishnah really can't fit with Rebbe Lazar. Why? Because it says, Ein makabla miyadam kine zavim vizavis, kine yaldais, v'chiyesh kine zavim vizavis, vizavis benachrim, el eresha benachrim v'seifa bekutim. Look at what it says like that. When you're trying to say that you don't accept from them the birds of a person that's a zav, or the, those, those uh, sacrifices, or a yaldis, what a non-Jew would be offering that? They don't have any impurity. It must be do- dealing with a Jew. Which Jew? We're talking about Kutim. Kutim must be Jewish. So what are you telling me that when it says Vein Makabla Mia Dam and there's a pronoun there, and we don't know who the pronoun's talking about, Trebalaz it says it's referring to only the non-Jews. The Gemara says, no, it can't be the non-Jews. It has to be referring to the Jews because it says that you don't accept from them sacrifices of, that come from impurity. 
that because of impurity. Why would a non-Jew bring a sacrifice from impurity? It must be that it's dealing with kutim. So now it says like this. The beginning of the Mishnah is talking about nachrim and kutim. Then the end of the Mishnah is only going to be talking about kutim. That's so that's a question. So it's going to be a little odd. The Gemara says, "Kenu Rasha Benachim is safe of Kutim." No, that's correct. It is Kutim. It is dealing with Kutim. The Rasha is dealing with Nach when it says Nachim means Nachim and Kutim, and the safe is just dealing with Kutim. You have to say that. Now, if that's the case, if that's the case. Then Ein Makablam the Yadam would be the Kutim, and we're following not um, whose opinion would that be? Would that be Shimon Ben Gamliel, or would that be the, be the opinion of Rebbe? Does it say in any of the commentaries? Yeah, let's say it's Reb. Let's say it's Rebbe. So Kuti Um Yeah. So it would be. So then it would fit with with Rebbe. It would fit with Rebbe. Otherwise, we won't accept from them anything according to Rebbe Because if they're like Yisrael, then the Yisrael Muma. So it would fit with Rebbe. But that's not the opinion of Rabbi Lazar. Okay, Amar Rabbi Yechanan. Rabbi Yechanan says, "Betchila ein mekabla mem leidav v'masayim leidav v'shenim masayim." At the beginning of the construction of the temple, um, we didn't accept anything from them. Whether it was something that was clear, um, that was a, a defined item, or whether or not whether it was just like um, I don't know, zel, <laughs> you know, uh, just cash or something. Uh, what was the issue? The issue is we didn't want them to come and say, look, that's my part of the temple. They point to some, uh, you know, top of the um, of the wall where they put up some decoration or something that they had something there that would chase away the birds. They say, oh, that's mine. I donated that door. I donated that. that uh, we didn't want them to say that. That would be a dove from a slave. But at the beginning of the time, we didn't want anything from them because we thought they would sabotage. But at the end, once the temple was built, then we didn't mind other things. We didn't mind if they gave things, as long as it wasn't something defined. You know, it's a, uh, the Ark of the, uh, in the Shul was donated by, uh, you know, some gangster. <laughs> no. Okay. That's not that one. That one looked correct. Rab Shimon ben Lakish Amar. Rab Shimon ben Lakish, he is the brother of Rab Dechner, right? He argues with Rab Dechner. So we don't want anything from them. Not, not even if it's not defined. We have a Mishnah. It really means a Brisa somewhere. It's a Tishefta, I think. That says, that argues with Rabbi Yechanan. Because it says, It says, we don't accept from them donations. To the better kabayas. Rabbi Yechonon says we do accept. So it, that price argues on Rabbi Yechonon. Now Rabbi Yechonon is an Amoira. So a price arguing on, on, on Rabbi Yechonon is a bit of a problem because it supports Rish Lakish. And it's a problem because it contradicts what Rabbi Yechonon said. So Pasala, explain it. Bein betchila, bein that price is referring to either the beginning or the end, but it has to be referring to something that's defined. And that's what it means we don't accept it from them. Why? Because Rabbi Yechanan agreed that you don't accept from them. Okay. Um, let's skip the brackets. Rabbi Shimon, Lakshim, Bein Betchila, Bein Masayif, Bein Makam, Lam, Leidav, and Masayim. Rabbi Shimon, okay, that you can skip as well. That the Taknam Chanatim takes it out. The, the Mishnah says, uh, now we have another bride, so Masnis and Pligal, Rabbi Shimon, Ben Lakish, or a Mishnah. That argues with Rabshim Ben Lakish. What does it say? The Tani it says, 
Hakol Shabin, everyone agrees, Shehin Noijun Vinidarim, that they can take a, a vow of a donation, or you can take a vow regarding them. This had to do with if you evaluate the person and you give his money, his value to the temple. There were different ways of evaluating the person. One of them was by his age, one of them what he would have been worth as a slave. But you can say, I'm Erechen. I, I, a person can say, I'm giving the donation of a, of a certain person's value. Or a person could be the one that's evaluated. Right, the the he's either the subject, the one that's giving, or he's the object, the one that's being evaluated. So, a non-Jew is allowed to give and be evaluated. That contradicts Rishlakish. Rishlakish said we don't want anything from them. Pasule Ayla. Explain that we're not talking about things that have to do with the construction of the temple. Say that it has to do with giving sacrifices. And you said clearly that we accept sacrifices from them. We just don't accept from them, according to Rishlokish, things that are going to be put into the into the building. They, they, we don't accept from them for the building fund, but for the daily, uh, um, or for the, uh, <laughs> for the maintenance that we accept. Okay. Nicha, this makes sense when it comes to Nigeria. When it comes to giving the donation, Ayla, Nigerian Ayla, that's the giving. But Nidarin Ayla, but the object, we said that you can evaluate them. What? They, that's going to go into the into the daily uh, into the into the sacrifices to evaluate someone. That only that always goes to what's called the Bedeka bias, the temple upkeep, which would go into the. Which would be the, the, the building fund, but that we don't want. The Gemara says, Ella Kishama Yisrael, we have to change the gears to him. The gross, which is it too. You have to read it like this. Um, what's that? Kemo? No, it wasn't, it wasn't the gross, it was the billion of shas. No, it was the gross. It says like this. The, yeah, the Gimel. I forget where I saw this. You have to switch it. You do it the other way. Um, I don't know where it is. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, here it is. Yeah. 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 So that means he becomes the uh, the non-Jew becomes the object. He could be. We're asking, how does he have? How could the non-Jew be the object of the sac of the uh, of the donation? The, um, we said that uh, um, we don't mind if they give a sacrifice, but that would mean their own gift. How do they become the object of a gift? If you're dealing with sacrifice, if you're dealing with, if you're dealing with. Erechin, um, when we're giving a value to the temple, then we're not dealing with sacrifices. But then we had a problem with that because Rish Lakish says that we don't take from them those sort of donations. We only take from them sacrifices. So we said, actually, we're talking about sacrifices. So if they're talking about sacrifices, then a non-Jew can give the sacrifice. But how does the non-Jew become the object of a sacrifice? So we said, no, a non-Jew could also be the object of the sacrifice. The way it works is like this. The non-Jew offers a sacrifice that we accept. The Jew comes by and says, what the non-Jew said, I'll also give. Now, that sacrifice becomes the, is the object. Before we were talking about that, yeah, well, it's not erech, but it becomes the nidarim as opposed to noidrim, the nidarim, the, the, what get what got a value in. Okay. The Gemara says, there's a problem with this. Um... If he brings a sacrifice, then he has to bring along with it the libations, the, the wine and the flour that gets brought along. What happens if there's any flour and wine left over? Doesn't that go to, to buy utensils for the temple? 
that means we're going to be accepting utensils from the sacrifice. The leftover of the meiser of the, the the leftover of the nesachim is going to end up being going into this um, becoming uh, utensils. Nimtza maybe davnesuyim comes out as a question, not only on Rishlakish, it's a question on Rishlakish. Rishlakish says we don't accept from them uh, specific items. It comes out that we're going to have utensils that are coming from non-Jews. Hesev Rabbi Yesi bar Rabbi Bun Vataninan Nerachin v'archin Leila bedek e'abayasinan We have another Mishnah that says that you can evaluate them. And doesn't that go to the bedek e'abayas? We're talking about over here is that we don't have a problem taking from them items that they didn't dedicate to the temple. They actually dedicated it to as a sacrifice. But the outcome of that is that it ends up being used in the temple. It was converted into the temple. So here, they actually gave flour and oil. We have no problem with that. It came along with the sacrifice. I, the leftover flour gets used as buying utensils, so that we were okay with. That didn't, wasn't a direct. I donated that. They dedicated it to heaven. At the end, it ends up coming out that it gets used as the temple. Uh, okay. That means, what's the source? I'm sorry? Yes, sort of. Uh, what's the source? He said, uh, it's not for you and us to build a house to God. That's what they told us, the Kutim. What that means is that not at the beginning and not at the end. We don't want anything from you that when it comes to the construction of the temple. Okay. He asked, we explained what the word shal meant in the Yerushalmi. That it means that he he's just asking if everyone agrees with him. He says, does everyone agree that you can't take from them funds to upkeep the, there was a stream of water or for the wall of the city and the towers? Because it says in the verse that it's not for you and us to build a house of God. And that's it. That's, that's the statement. Does I hold like that? Does everyone agree? Okay. Skip the brackets. The, I'm sorry, the parentheses. And go to the word Masnisa de Rab Meir. Or Amar of Meir, maybe. Masnisa de Rab Meir, the Amar of Meir. When the Mishnah said that it if someone is only paying a shekel, but he, he has a sella coin, he goes and he gives a sella and he takes change a shekel. When you say shekel, we mean a half a shekel. A, a, a Mishnah shekel is a biblical half a shekel. A Mishnah sella is a biblical shekel. So he gives a sella and he gets a shekel back, which means the half, he wants a half a shekel back for change. So we said that he has to give one kalbay. I'm sorry. He has to give two kalbin. Two kalbin. That's what the Mishnah said. Stay. Okay. So comes along the Gemara and says that Masisa to Reb Meir. That has to be the opinion of Reb Meir. The Amma Reb Meir. He holds like this. He's giving half a shekel, right? That half a shekel, according to Reb Meir, there's an exchange fee. Okay. Plus, the half a shekel, we don't know if it was clipped. He has to give a little bit extra. Now he has to give two. All right? Kasava Rameyer, Benais and Shikli Shalim, Shukhayev Bekelvin. Rameyer holds that if someone comes with the exact change, he has to pay a, uh, he has to pay a Kalvin as well. 
Dumber of Mayor, because Ramayor says, Come in, Matbea Shalish, Hitia Kutish Bacham, Tachas Kisikwai, the Verla Maisha, Vamala, Zayitno, Kazayitno. That means that you have to give the exact coin. When Moshe, um, uh, when it says in the Torah that Hashem told Moshe that you have to give a half a shekel, it says that this you shall give. So God took a coin from under the, uh, his throne, a coin of fire, took out, he says, a coin that, that's, that's like this. It has to have the exact weight. I don't know if the fire had any weight, but um, it's logistant, right? It wasn't. It, <laughs> um, it had. Uh, so um, he he showed him that coin. It means it needs to be the exact coin. That means the mayor's opinion is is that the exact coin has to be given. So the, what's the reason for the kalbine? According to the mayor, there's two reasons. One is to make sure the coin is the full coin, and the second one is the exchange fee. So because he's giving, he did one exchange, he came with a seller, and he's giving, he's getting a shekel change, so that deserves one kalbine, plus an extra kalbine because the coin needs to be complete. Seller, not on seller, little shekel. Chayef shnei kalbine. So I'm Reb de Reb Meir. Reb says this is the opinion of Reb Meir, as we just said. Tanya, Elu Chayavim Bekalbin, because it's taught in a Brisa, these are Chayav and a Kalbin, skip the parentheses. Kalbin Echad, or a Meir based Kalbin. It's said in the Mishnah that if someone pays for him and his friends, he's Chayav one Kalbin. Rameir says he's Chayav two. Why are you Chayav two? You didn't even get an exchange, you just gave a full one. It says because Rameir holds that you have to pay the kalbin so that the coin is complete. Umar Rav, right? Rav says, Divri Akali, or Rav Amar. Rav says, no, that everyone agrees that when you're getting change, when you're paying for yourself, but you have a full seller, you have to pay two. That everyone agrees to. That's not just Rav's opinion. That's just, I'm sorry. Rav says that's not Rav Meir's opinion. Dummer of Mayor, because Reb Mayor holds Echad Shekel Shu Nisin, Vechad Shekel Shu Naital, Vechad Ludivre Taira. Reb Mayor says in that case, you would need three Kalbinas. Al Daite the Rav, Gibel Kalbinas in it. Rav holds that there's three Asa. Asa Reb Yermia, Reb Shmol Bar Reb Yitzchak, Rashim Rav, Shlesha Kalbinas in it. Echad Shekel Shu Nisin, Vechad Shekel Shu Naital, Vechad Ludivre Taira. He holds like this. Rav would hold like, Rav would hold like this. That Reb Mayor holds. That when I get when I give a full seller, I have to give three kalbinas. One is because I'm giving a half a shekel, and that needs to be complete. Maybe it was clipped, so I have to give an extra kalbin. Then I'm giving a half a shekel out of my seller. I have an exchange fee there, and because I'm taking change, so I have an exchange fee for the change. I have to have another one, so that's the three. So according to Rav, that part of the Mishnah is really not Reb Meir's view, that's the Rabbanon's view. But according to the first opinion here, Reb Lozer, that, will, that was Reb Meir's view, and he says that you have to have two. Okay, let's leave it over here. The Siyam will be um, right after davening. We're, it's going to be in the tent. Okay. Shekayach, everyone. Is tomorrow a regular day? 121 da, which is four months. Is Jeff tomorrow, is going to give the seal. I'm sorry? Tomorrow a regular day for us? Uh, is tomorrow a regular day? For our yeah, kids. let's do regular time. Okay. Yeah, we can't change that. Do these what? people know that there's now more people in the room than there are? Yeah, the let's screen? hold it around. Let's, you guys are missing all the fun. Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Let's go bring back our boys. <laughs> Tomorrow will be regular time. We'll try. Regular time. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Right. They took it. Uh huh. Have a good day. Oh, how was it? 
went well. Uh huh. But he, he, he felt like he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. You can usually tell. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, oh, going down. Yeah. Oh, 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 I hear what you said. Then you can break it apart and then put it all back together. Okay, guys, have a good day.